anybody beside Sa'd radiallahu anhu. And he said it a thousand times. Because really, for Sa'd, the Prophet ﷺ had a special place in his heart. When Sa'd radiallahu anhu would come into the gathering of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ would smile and he would say, Sa'd is my uncle. Can any of you show me that he has an uncle like Sa'd? Because Sa'd was from the tribe of the mother of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet wasallam on the battle of Uhud, he said a thousand times, every time Sa'd would shoot an arrow, he said, may my mother and my father be sacrificed for you, Sa'd. May my mother and my father be sacrificed for you a thousand times for Sa'd. Sa'd was one of those Sahaba that on the battle of Uhud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him the angels. He says, when I was standing next to the Prophet wasallam, I saw two men protecting the Prophet wasallam, and they had white clothing on. And they were fighting with great ferocity. And he says, I swear by Allah, I did not see these people before that day, and I did not say see them after that day. Allah showed him the angels which were protecting the Prophet wasallam on the battle of Uhud. And then the Prophet wasallam passed away. And it will be no exaggeration to say Sa'ad radiallahu anhu was that Sahabi who changed the landscape of history. He was that general who defeated the superpower of his time. He was that general who defeated the Persians. In the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, the, Muslim, the Persians amassed a huge army and this was the defining battle. And Umar radiallahu anhu wanted to be the general for this army. But Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu objected and he said, O Mirul Mu'mineen, if you die in the battlefield, then we jeopardize our conquest. If you die in the battlefield, then what will happen? So, so Umar radiallahu anhu said, Who will be go in my place? And they began to think, who could substitute Umar? Who could substitute Umar? And Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu said, Wajjatuhu. He said, I found him. al asadu fi brathinihi. He said, that lying in his den. That lying in his den. That he was a man who was good enough to substitute Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, that is an excellent opinion. The reality, he wasn't a lion only in this time, but he was a lion in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu anha mentions that upon occasion, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was worried about his purity. He was worried for himself. And he said, I wish that a pious companion comes and guards me today. And she mentions after a short period of time, we heard footsteps, we heard the noise of armor. And the Prophet ﷺ asked, who is it? And the man replied, it's Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, O Messenger of Allah, and I've come to protect you. And Aisha radiallahu anhu mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ slept that night, and he slept in a way that you could actually hear him breathing heavy. Because Sa'ad radiallahu anhu was protecting him. Then after the battle of Qadusiyah, when they defeated the superpower of the day, and the Muslim became their superpower, it was the command of Umar radiallahu anhu, that to Sa'ad, that when the Persians leave, do not let them get away. Chase them. Because what would happen is every time the Muslim would fight the Persians, they would go back and they would regroup. And upon this occasion, Umar radiallahu anhu told Sa'ad, said Sa'ad, upon this occasion, so this time, chase them. So Sa'ad radiallahu anhu went chasing the Persians. And when he reached the, Tig the Tigris river, the Persians had already crossed. And there was no boats left. So how do the Muslims go across? And the Sa'ad radiallahu anhu are concerned. Now how are they going to go? These are desert people. They've never seen rivers before. So they wrote a letter to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and Umar radiallahu anhu replied and he said, Sa'ad, he said, Ya Sa'ad, ista'in billah wa la ta'jiz wa tawakkal ala Allah wa kul hasbi Allah wa ni'ma al-wakeel. He said, Oh Sa'ad, trust in Allah. Take assistance from Allah and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not become despondent and say Allah is sufficient for us. And go across. See, who was Umar? Umar radiallahu anhu was that person that when the governor of a certain place wrote a letter to Umar ibn Khattab telling Umar radiallahu anhu that the people 
in the place where I am. What, they, what happens is that every year the Nile dries up. And what they do is that they embellish a young virgin. And then they sacrifice her and they throw her into the Nile. And the Nile begins to flow again. And what did Umar anhu did? He didn't write a letter back to the governor. He wrote a letter to the Nile itself. And he said, from Amirul Mu'mineen Umar ibn Khattab to the Nile. If you flow out of your own accord, then we don't need you to flow. But if it is Allah which makes you flow, then flow. And what the narration mentioned, that they threw the letter into the Nile and the Nile began to flow. So Umar radiallahu anhu is telling, stop, go over, go over. And there are two narrations to this. One narration is that Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, he took his men over the Tigris river and the, and the horses went over the river. They galloped like if they were galloping on dry land. And the other narration is that Sa'ad radiallahu anhu and the rest of the army, they plunged their horses into the Tigris river. And these desert people who had never seen rivers before went across this huge river. And when they reached the other side, and the Persians saw them, they were overawed. They thought these were people were jinn, they were invincible. And they threw down their arms. And really, it was upon the hands of Sa'ad radiallahu anhu that the prophecy of the Prophet sallallahu came to pass. When the Prophet sallallahu was in Medina, and the huge army of the confederates, the Arab, all the Arab clans and the Jews, they unite against the Muslims. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu mentioned the state of the Muslims on that day. He mentioned that for three days I didn't eat anything. I found some skin. And what I did, I washed this skin and I boiled it and I ate this skin. This was the battle where the Sahaba came to the Prophet ﷺ and they were complaining to the Prophet ﷺ about hunger and they removed their garments and they had rocks tied to their stomach and the Prophet ﷺ removed his garments and he had two stones tied to his stomach. They had stones tied to their stomach and the Prophet ﷺ had two stones tied to his stomach. Upon this battle, what the Sahaba did is that they dug trenches all the way around Medina. And when they were digging these trenches, they came past a huge rock which they couldn't break. So they called the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ struck it. And the third of it broke and a huge spark came out. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Akbar. And then he struck it again and another huge spark came out and another third of it broke. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Akbar. And then he struck it again. It became small pieces. A huge spark came out again. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Akbar. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we saw you, saw you do a thing today which we've never seen you do before. And the Prophet ﷺ said, When I struck it the first time and the spark came out, Allah showed me the palaces of Yemen. That a day will come that we will take the palaces of Yemen. And then when I struck it again, then another spark came out and Allah showed me the palaces of the Romans. That a day will come that we will take the Roman palaces. And then when I struck it again, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me the palaces of the Persians. And Allah showed me the white palace. And when Sa'ad radiallahu anhu went over the river, and then he saw the white palace, and he saw the prophecy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming to pass. And it was upon the hands of Sa'ad that the prophecy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to pass. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, he entered the white palace, and he gave the adhan. And there was a fire, because the Zoroastrian worship fire which was on for thousands of years because the Zoroastrian the Persians ruled for 12 centuries they ruled for and he made the adhan and that fire went out by itself this was Sa'ad radiallahu anhu and then when Sa'ad radiallahu anhu became old he lost his eyesight and people would come to Sa'ad and they would ask Sa'ad to make dua for him. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu would make dua for him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would cure them. 
And somebody asked Saad radiallahu anhu, he said, Oh Saad, you make dua for everybody else. Why don't you make dua Allah cure you, restore your eyesight? And Saad listened to the words of Saad radiallahu anhu. He said, no. He said, Allah has given me favors all through my life. He said, I'd rather astahi min Allah. I'm shy, I am hiya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but asbir wa ahtasib. But I'd rather do sabr and seek reward by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he knew the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if anybody is tested by his eyes and he has sabr, I see no other reward for him but jannah. I see no other reward for him but Jannah. If you're tested through this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do suffer, then there is no other reward for you but Jannah. And then when Sa'ad radiallahu anhu became very old and he was literally on his deathbed, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu called his children and he told them that bring me a garment. Bring me that particular garment from that particular closet. And they took out this old garment and they brought it to him. And they said, what is this garment? Saad radiallahu anhu was that sahab. He was, the, out of the ten who was guaranteed Jannah, he was the last one to pass away. He passed away in 55 Hijrah. And they asked him, what is this garment? And he said, this is the garment which I wore on the battle of Badr. The battle of Badr took place in two hijrah and he passed away in 55 hijrah. For 53 years he looked after this garment because he wanted to be buried in this garment. Because the reality is that the people of Badr have a special status in the history of Islam. In the time of the Prophet wasallam, there was a sahabi called Khatib ibn Abi Balta. And Khatib, what he did is he sent a letter to the mushrikeen of Makkah informing him of the plans of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ sent Ali radiallahu anhu and he told him, go to a place called Khakh. There you will find a woman on a camel and she will have a letter. And this place Khakh is about 12 miles away from Medina. And Ali radiallahu anhu with another two companions went. And they saw that woman exactly at the place where the Prophet ﷺ said she was. And she was on a camel. And they said, give us the letter that you have. And they, she said, I've got no letter. They said, give us the letter. She said, I have no letter. Then they said, look, the words of the Prophet Sallallahu are the truth. This was, this was the iman upon the words of the Prophet Sallallahu She said, give us the letter, otherwise we're going to strip you. And then she saw these people are serious. And out of her plaited hair, she took out a letter informing from Abu, from Khatib ibn Abi Balta to the, the mushrikeen of Makkah, informing him of the plans of the Prophet ﷺ. And when Khatib came to the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Khatib, Khatib, what is this? And Khatib said, Oh Messenger of Allah, do not hasten to pass judgment upon me. For I am an ally of the people of Quraysh. And every other migrant has family over there besides me. And they are family who will look after their family. I have no family over there. And the only reason I did this is that so they will protect my family. They will not take revenge upon my family. And then he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I have not become a disbeliever. I am happy with belief and I have not become an apostate. And the Prophet ﷺ said, You have spoken the truth. And Umar radiallahu anhu, Umar was Umar. Umar radiallahu anhu was standing there and Umar radiallahu anhu said, Oh Messenger of Allah, allow me to take this man's neck off. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Umar, didn't Hatib participate in the battle of Badr? And Umar radiallahu anhu said, Yes. He said, Don't you know what Allah says about the people of Badr? He said, I'malu ma shi'tum. لَقَدْ وَجِبَتْ لَكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ He said, do whatever you wish, because Jannah is wajib upon you. And Umar radiallahu anhu began to cry. And therefore, Saad radiallahu anhu, he kept this garment for how many years? For 53 years he kept this garment, because he wanted to be buried in this garment. And when Saad radiallahu anhu was about to pass away, he was in the lap of his son Mus'ab. And Mus'ab began to cry. And Saad radiallahu anhu said, he said, oh my son, don't cry. Because I swear by Allah, Allah will never throw your father into the fire of hell.
said, don't cry. Allah will never throw your father into the fire of hell because he was a man who was guaranteed Jannah not once, but he was guaranteed Jannah on a number of times. The Prophet ﷺ upon occasion he was sitting with the Sahaba radiallahu